Tonight we have with us a Grammy Award winner. He's known as the American Songster. I'm pleased to introduce the amazing Dom Clemens. <laughs> Louisville, Kentucky has a very interesting history with the old time music because it's, I guess you call it a cornucopia. So it's like so a lot of a lot of different music coming out of Louisville at that time because it's a port town. It also uh, connects so many sections of the country. You go from New Orleans, you can get to Louisville. You get access to Memphis, Chicago, St. Louis, Iowa, um, Cincinnati, and then all the way up and down where the river can go. So Louisville has this very interesting centralized location that is reflected in the music, and specifically with the jug bands. You know, um, when I was first getting into jug band music, uh, the, the most popular group is the Memphis Jug Band. Louisville's in a very interesting place where you have a combination of the country music, the string band music, the pop music of the day. You also have the, the black minstrel shows, which is a whole other section of the history. It's hard to link a lot of these old time blues players to a particular tradition. And there's a, a tradition in that. There's a tradition in sitting on your porch and just tapping your foot and figuring out how it goes. Louisville came at this time when ragtime and hot music were combining to become jazz. And so the jug bands have this vibe that's very similar to jazz, but it's not quite jazz yet. So you have all these different factions coming together. And then also, you know, um, found out that Kentucky bourbon jugs were one of the reasons that jug band music uh, evolved out of Louisville. As I went along uh, with Louisville as well, uh, to find out that it was one of the first sections of the country where freed blacks could go and start industries. And so as a person of color, that became a thing that was interesting to me as a social history. And then all this really wonderful music coincides with that social history. Yeah, man. <laughs> this Old time music and the banjo was a symbol of the uh, survival of uh, the, uh, the black people of this country in a way where it condensed itself down from all these African instruments down through the Caribbean into the United States of America and, and it became its own phenomenon. The idea of country, the old plantation, the sharecropping later, all of that stuff just got left behind and the banjo being kind of the quintessential countryfied instrument in the United States, it just got left behind too and they just, you know, and folks just never went back and so like my generation that is uh, reclaiming this instrument, it's the first time that we've been able to go back where there aren't the visceral reactions of saying, oh, you're an Uncle Tom for playing it, or, oh, you know, why are you playing that white man's music? When you get into the history, you find that it's, it's the quintessential American music. And it's made out of, of course, out of a shared history, but that shared history is very complex as well. And that's one of the things that's very important about the banjo. It, it leads to this alternate history that is very confusing, and it means something different for every generation that picks up the instrument. Um, like I said, the banjo changes faces for each community it reaches. And so it's an instrument that just keeps moving ahead and moving ahead, 
all of a sudden you look into the, the history of the instrument and you find that there's not only just a lot of black faces, it's a bunch of them, hundreds of thousands of different players that are, have told their story through this instrument. My own, just, my own personal journey and me as a musician as I've developed, I found it very important that a lot of this music was, uh, was passed on through the oral tradition being spoken from one person to another. So that's very important. So I could play you a bunch of old recordings, but it wouldn't give the same effect as me playing a song. As I've gone along, when I first started out, there were a lot of elder statesmen that were musicians who had been telling the story. And uh, as I've gone along, those, those musicians are either getting old and retiring or they're just dying and uh, that was something I thought was very important to get out there to the younger people because no longer are these uh, older generations going to be there for them. I think there's something really special in the way these old time older musicians grooved and something quintessential to our American history in that groove. A friend of mine once said it this way, he said, you know, when you're a kid, you don't realize what people do to put the Christmas party on for you as a kid until you actually put the Christmas party on. Then all of a sudden you realize, oh, all these people did all this stuff and I just was uh, coasting along as a kid. So now I'm finding as a musician the same sort of thing. I have to be one of the storytellers that starts telling the basic story so that because it just gets forgotten if not it's and it only takes one a generation for any type of music to go away The top priority always with music is to make sure it's great music for the audience. That's always the top priority because you can talk about the history all day, but if the music's not good, no one cares. I mean, essentially. Um, that's, that's a little harsh to say that, but you want your audience to walk away saying, I really like that music. And then if they look it up, then they can say, oh, well, cool, I learned this, this, that, and the other from it. But you gotta get them at just, just the first entry point. It just has to be great or it has to really come off for them. Thank you.